Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. With you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out like the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great and in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Let us read Psalm 147 responsively by half verse. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. And binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. And calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds. And prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains. And green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds. And for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him. In those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am trusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out the demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, and please be seated. There's a story written about St. Francis not the Pope, he's not a saint yet, that talks about Francis giving an early sermon to a tree full of birds. Now, we don't know how the birds responded to Francis sermonizing, but in his sermons, he was always telling creatures that by their very existence, they were giving glory to God. So they should just be who they are and do their own unique thing. And that was enough. As I said, we don't know what in the world those creatures thought about Francis' sermon, much less understand what he was telling them. These impromptu sermons to creation undoubtedly allowed Francis to understand and helped him to do his unique thing too and that was to give his one life back to God. And honestly, what else would God want from us? We cannot give what we are not, nor do I believe that God would want it. We can only give what we are, warts and all, and it is the very giving back that delights the Creator. Never is it the perfection of the gift. It never hurts to be reminded of that. In fact, I believe we need to be regularly reminded of that. It frees us to be our best selves. We are also freed in, and in fact invited to see our individual lives as part of a much greater story, as part of God's story and the entire cosmos. The readings today ask us to do just that to consider our lives from a wider perspective. In some of the most beautiful poetry in the Bible, the prophet Isaiah offers not only words of comfort for the Israelites, but also reminds them of the fleetingness of creation and the powers of humanity, contrasting that with the enduring nature of God. In this section of Isaiah, the Israelites are returning from a prolonged exile in Babylon. They do not know what to expect as they return home. Many generations removed, invariably there will be changes, and they, need to, and they will need to make a new life for themselves, reclaim their identity in the land of their ancestors. Isaiah asks some powerful forceful, rhetorical questions to make sure they hear the message, even if they struggle to comprehend it fully. I'm not so sure I would like being referred to as a grasshopper, 
But there's something about Isaiah's words that don't allow you to linger there. Instead, we are overwhelmed by the infinity of the God of the universe, who is the source of all creation, who is the source of our confidence and hope. How can that not inspire us, inspire our lives? For the Israelites, the exile is over. They are freed, and while there, are, there may have been various groups returning, all of whom may have had different experiences, the God whose energy flows in and through all creation gives humankind renewed strength and wisdom and the resources needed to flourish in that time and in that place. I don't always spend much time looking for the connections between the readings. Most of the time I wonder why certain readings are put together. But after some consideration, though, I, I see that there is some connection, an important connection beyond the, obvious, the, on the obvious classic healing story that we hear from Mark today. In the gospel, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law by Jesus is pretty amazing. But what happens after the healing is even more amazing. What isn't so amazing about the story, and if anything, it can be disturbing, especially to our modern ears, it is the report that as Peter's mother-in-law was helped up and the fever left her, she began, it seems without meeting a, missing a beat, to serve them. It makes you wonder if she's healed just so that she can serve, so that she can get back to her duties. Coming back from the edge, from the brink of death, you'd think that would be the last thing someone would want to do. Under the circumstances, Shouldn't there be something else for you, something new and different? What Peter's mother-in-law did was what was expected. It's something she would not have questioned or even perhaps given much thought. Whether or not it was the only thing she thought she could do. We're the ones with the questions here. But what if it helps us understand, that is the questions, that something else was happening here. What if the healing of Simon Peter's mother-in-law was a restoration to what she always was and that she always wanted to be? What if it was to be a good and loving mother, grandmother? And in the process of being lifted up by Jesus, she too becomes a disciple called to minister, to serve as she was always meant to serve, to be what she was always meant to be. Put that way, if that was the intent all along, then her story sounds a lot like Francis' story, preaching to the birds and to himself, to be who they are and do their own unique thing. And the Israelites returning from exile to their ancestral home to start new and reclaim their identity. They are all freed from something which in the process frees them for something else, to give their one life back to God. That day, people from all around crowded the doorway of Simon Peter's home, hoping to be healed by Jesus. As Jesus cares for them, heals them, restores their lives, he is freeing them from their illnesses, from whatever ails them to be the person God created them to be. Created them to be. The work is exhausting, and it takes its toll on Jesus such that he retreats to take care of his own need for silence and prayer. I think many of us can relate to that, the exhaustion and relentlessness of caring for the needs of our loved ones that are aged or ill or infirmed. Even who, those whose vocation it is in the caring and helping of people, even they succumb to compassion fatigue. 
We all need time for rest and relaxation to take care of our own mind, body, and soul needs. This is just the beginning for Jesus as he gathers his own strength to embrace the mission entrusted to him, to heal and feed and care for all and set free all who recognize there are many needs and come to him. Not many understand the rest of the message beyond the healing that God wants to set us all free so that we might have a life of purpose and meaning and live into our God-given identity and potential and claim our calling as children of God and join in the mission to love and bless all of creation. It's still early, and this message will come up again and again in Mark as it does in the other Gospels, too. We are part and parcel of a much bigger story, God's story, and the good news is indeed relentless. It will keep reminding us that it is something we can count on. If we learn nothing else from the stories today, what I hope will stick and what I hope we do remember is this. God does not call us to be something we are not. God is in the big business of restoring us to whom we really are. Our mind, body, and spirit, everything together, everything that we were always meant to be. It is enough, and for that, we can praise God. Amen. Let us join together and affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us offer our prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, called together as a family of faith from every time and place, let us offer our prayers to God, that we might share our mutual concerns for the world, the church, and ourselves saying, Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for the leaders of nations, and especially for the president, that wisdom and integrity might prevail, and for regions torn by conflict, that peace and harmony might be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, for the unity of the body of Christ, that needless division might cease, for our bishops, priests, deacons, and all who nurture our life together, that the body may be strengthened and our common life enriched. Lord, in your great mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for this congregation and for our presence in the community, that persons may find here the means to deeper relationship with God, and for our ministry of reconciliation, that all may find here the forgiveness of God and the acceptance of each other. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need, for the hungry and for the homeless, that food and shelter might be theirs, for the oppressed and the downtrodden, for freedom and dignity might be theirs, and for the sick and the infirm, especially Janie, Dana, Christy, Carrie, Simon, Patty, the Mueller family, the Spence family, Sandra, Robert, the Hollis family, the Holes family, Luke, Rob, Jeff, Ted, Tom, Holly, Craig, Bailey, Stan, Jack, Kathy, Geneva, Greg, Anna, Parker, Mia, Kate, Carol, Nancy, and Sheila, our siblings and families in the Navajo land, those afflicted by COVID-19, and our frontline medical providers, Becky, Tessa, Pat, Ashley, Donald, and Lynn, that health and wholeness might be theirs. We acknowledge and pay respect and pray for the Salt River Pima and Maricopa indigenous community as the original people of the land, and their role as custodians of this land given to them by our one and only creator God. We pray for all affected by violence, terrorism, and natural disaster. And we pray for those in the military. We pray also that God will send us those who are hungry to know and follow Jesus and that we might welcome and walk with them on their spiritual journey. We pray also for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Western Mexico. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Bermundi and in our own diocese for Trinity Cathedral in Phoenix. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember those who have died and especially those at rest in a memorial garden that we may follow the example of their lives and be returned with them in the glory of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, we commend to your care all for whom we pray, in the confidence that your love for them is greater than anything we can know or imagine. Hear us through Christ our Lord. Let us acknowledge our sins before God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please accept the greetings of the people. I'm going to say a word uh, that was uh, in the uh, book about about these spirituals. And the, before we sing the spiritual today, that the uh, ranger said, and this is what he said: "In a time and place where physical hardship and emotional anguish were a way of life for people in bondage, God placed into their hearts and onto their lips a song. So powerful was this song." that its words was hope itself, in its melody, the peace for which their hearts yearned, and in its rhythm, the pulse of the Almighty who sustained them. That song was the spiritual, and it survives to this day as one of the most deeply moving expressions of the human spirit.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this. For the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Okay, we have three birthdays to celebrate today. First, we have Parker Neff, and we have Erica Nemeth, and we have Dana Galt. So let us pray for them together. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in their wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have no anniversaries today that we know of to celebrate, so we will move on to an announcement that today is Scout Sunday. And the scouting program at St. James is more than just an activity for our youth to learn about the outdoors. Scouting provides fun, fellowship, and training to our youth as well as youth in our communities. Our scout troop would like to invite you and your family to be a part of their program. And if 
you need some more information, you can contact our Scoutmaster, Kevin Flock, and that will be in, um, you can see his email. So now let us pray for the Scouts. Dear God, we are pleased today to honor our young people engaged in the honorable tradition of scouting. We are proud of them and gladly acknowledge their importance to us and our community. We thank you for their leaders who give valuable time and effort to convening and training them, and for all who help with their troops in any way. We believe that the values they espouse as scouts come from you, for you have taught us the meaning of discipline, the virtue of work, reverence for life and nature, and the ethics of honesty and trustworthiness. You have shown us, moreover, the importance of caring for others in our community and for serving them in humble yet meaningful ways. We pray for our own scouts in particular, and for all other scouts as well, here and in other parts of the world, that they may continue to find joy and blessedness in their programs, and that they may grow into adulthood as strong and responsible men and women who will make valuable contributions to their churches, their communities, their count countries, and the world. May your Holy Spirit rest upon them to guide them, especially at the more difficult points of their journeys, and bring them happily into your eternal kingdom. For you are our God, and we commend them to you with all our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for our announcements today, we will not have virtual coffee hour, but we will be offering communion to go from 11 to 11.45 in our South parking lot. We look forward to seeing you soon. Also today at 1.30, we will be conducting Christian formation as we study the seven session Life Transformed, the way of love during Lent. Please use the links in the Thursday email thoughts to get to the, um, to the Christian formation on Zoom. Just a reminder, we will be offering three sessions for Ashes to Go on Ash Wednesday, February 17th. Please see the newsletter and the emails for more information. A pre-recorded service will be available for your viewing and participation as of 7 a.m. on Ash Wednesday. So, as we move into Lent, Lent Madness is here, and today during Communion to Go, we are able to hand out our Lent Madness Saints booklets, and we can do that again on Ash Wednesday if you'd like. The back of the, bo of the booklet, where'd it go? Here it goes. <laughs> Has our brackets, and you can fill it out and tell us which saint you think is going to win the Golden Halo. You can see more information when our February newsletter gets to you. Also, as we prepare for Lent, we invite you to a very special virtual Zoom Shrove Tuesday, and that will be on February 16th from 5.30 to 6.30. So bring your pancakes and your sausage and whatever else you've got and to your computer tablet and your camera. And we're going to have some fun with prizes and games. We already have the prizes ready for you. So please see the newsletter and our Thursday Thoughts email for more information. And then finally, we will begin our five-week Lenten study on February 24th. We will conduct it from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Please you use the Zoom registration link. We will be exploring a new reality of Jesus Christ Superstar. And the weekly emails and the newsletters have additional information, as well as the link to register, so we encourage you to do so. Thank you. May the amazing grace from God who calls you to eternal life in Jesus Christ 
carry you through the storms of life. May this wondrous grace from God nourish faith within you with courage for living faithful discipleship as ministers of Jesus Christ. And now God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, and the Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen.